We need to keep in mind that though we often associate dyslexia with reading, it is a different way of processing information. And often that difference manifests itself in language. And we need to carry that understanding over to the math class, because math is a language unto itself. And it can often be confusing to our students. Think about the word circumference. This is most likely not a word our students are using on a day-to-day -day basis. Another area in which math presents itself as its own unique language is around the area of homophones. Words like whole, words like some, they can have different meanings in math class. We need to be sure to explicitly teach this difference and not just assume that our students are understanding the different connotations that these words bring in math. Let's read this equation, guys. Ready? The explicit Seven instruction of these three. words is very Eight important for our students. Ten. But this time we're going to read it with words. We might give a student a target word, a word like add end. So for example, 3 plus 2 equals 5. It's add end plus add end equals sum. They use that word. And the more they use it, the deeper the meaning is for them. And then when they see that word on a sheet, in a curriculum, they're not thrown by that one word. They know exactly what to do with it. So a word like difference is used in everyday language. But in math, the difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So we want students to make the connection. Well, the difference between five and three is two. The difference between you and your brother is that he's a boy and you're a girl. From homophones to words that are used every day to words that are only found in math, the retrieval of that word could be challenging for our students. Let's say circumference. So close. One important part of vocabulary instruction with our students is the morphology or the meaning of parts of words. Circum means around. Is she a genius or what? A lot of that comes from the history of our language and the influences of different languages on ours. So if we take a word like multiplication, we would break it into syllables. But we would look at the prefix multi, which means many. We would look at the root, P-L-I-C, which means to fold. Can you fold that one piece of paper in half? If we were to cut that apart, how many would you have? Two. Two. Did you just multiply that piece of paper? Yes. You did, right? We also talk about factors and products, and that's another great example of morphology. What? are the parts of a multiplication equation. This part of your word means to make. Does factor sound like the word factory? Yes. No. What do factories make? Products. So that's a good trick to help our students remember the parts of a multiplication equation. Love it. OK, guys, everybody, what is this called again? The product. And what is this? Factor. And what does your symbol mean? Crucial. Beautiful.